Okay, I'm back with uh, testing different uh, formulations for APCP. Um, this time, my goal or my purpose is to um, form a propellant that will actually flow and pour into the casting tube. Um, so, a couple new changes that I've done to the formulation. This time, I've not uh, ground the ammonium perchlorate down in a ball mill. This time I've left it at its original uh, bot size of 200 micron. By not causing the particles to be as fine, the AP particles to be as fine as they were last time, the um, propellant will flow more easily because less fine ammonium perchlorate has uh, less surface area than finer ammonium perchlorate. Uh, therefore, you know, the particles don't interact with the liquid as much and uh, causes it to flow. Another thing, a difference between the original um, spherical AP and the ground AP is that spherical AP, the actual particles are in the shape of a ball and that causes the, them to roll over each other very easily and uh, that causes them to work much better and much more smoothly and uh, then ground AP which is very commonly has very sharp edges the particles and they'll interlock on each other and they won't allow them to flow alright this is my formulation the most com common ingredient in the rocket propellant is the oxidizer this is going to be ammonium perchlorate 200 micron left as bought um, for the binder slash fuel I'm going to be using Moss low viscosity resin. That's a two to one resin to hardener, and you measure this by weight. That's epoxy. Um, for my accelerant, I'm going to be using um, 600 mesh Indian blackhead um, flake aluminum, bought off eBay. Okay, and this this just increases um, ISP, which is uh, specific impulse. Um, it's not necessary, although it does. Uh, create a much brilliant much more brilliant flame and it's just cooler and for my catalyst I'm going to be using copper oxide black uh, I, if you feel this is a lot heavier than any other ingredients very dense um, this will this is possible that this will cause the mix to be uh, too thick and it won't no, no longer will be pourable but we'll see I, I hope not Make sure to be wearing gloves, um, some sort of mask to keep dust from going into your lungs, and uh, some sort of eye protection. Now that I have AP 25 grams and aluminum 1 gram weighed out into those two dis Dixie cups right there close to the camera, I can now weigh out my epoxy. 7 grams of epoxy, both resin and hardener, are going to go into that tub right there. As you can see, the resulting mass of propellant, this is just before packing, still not a pourable mixture. However, I'm very, actu I'm actually very satisfied with the consistency that I um, got from this. It's a, it's a lot like clay, so it'll actually pack very well. It's almost, you know, it's the consistency of hardening our candy. So I'm going to have to pack it up real nice, make sure there's no air bubbles, and I'm just going to pack it in and we'll see what we get. All right. The consistency of this propellant is uh, a lot less viscous than the last one, a lot more fluid, so it's going to take the shape of this container overnight as it cures, I hope. Um, but I like this one just a bit better. It's not too, too sticky, and uh, I, there's, I think there'd be less air in this one, so theoretical density. It's going to be less than the last one. I mean, more than the last one. So uh, th um, this propellant is pro most likely going to perform better. Uh, than the last one, even though the AP particle size is greater on this propellant, the propellant should perform uh, much better than the last one. This is a small bead of the uh, uncured propellant just before case, um, just before casting. Um, you you can see that it's like very it's very clay like. Uh, it can be mashed and moved into different uh, you know forms. Um, so it's a lot like uh, our candy, except for the fact that it's not at 300 degrees. And that's one quality of this composite propellant that I like very much. 
Um, so remember that uh, any uncured propellant will still burn just as vigorously and probably more dangerously because if the uncured pro propellant uh, burns and piece of, pieces of it get on you, the stickiness of the propellant will probably stay on your skin and you know burn a hole right through your arm. So uh, make sure that you be very careful not to um, have this stuff ignite on you. It's, it's still ignitable. So we're going to go ahead and ignite this small piece and uh, we'll see what happens. And also I need to wash my hands like right now. Okay, the propellant is that little dot on the cinder block. Um, very small amount, less than one gram I'm sure. Um, so I'm just going to light it from the right side and we're going to see how it burns. The characteristics we're looking for is a uh, moderate burn rate with hopefully some blue flame, but I'm not sure that's going to um, happen in such low pressure. Okay, I'm going to light it. Wait, I want to light it. What? I want to light it. Kind of slow burn. So that was a propellant. You saw that it had a violet slash blue burn uh, flame. I mean, and that was pretty cool. Uh, the burn rate was okay, um, considering it was such an it was in such low pressure, and um, APCP does not burn very quickly in very low pressures. Um, that was decent. I'd have to say that was a successful test. And with higher pressures, the flame color is going to be much better. And in higher pressures, the burn rate is going to be a lot, lot better, depending on the um, on how much the burn rate increases with pressure. Okay, so here's my cured propellant. I cut off a small sliver of the propellant to uh, scrutinize and observe. That means, you know, look at. Uh, okay, so here's my uh, cutoff section. This is the part that was inside. Um, if you look at it from how I'm looking at it, I'm not sure if the camera shows this clear clarity, but uh, I think that it looks very, um, very good. Um, the on the lines that you see and the uh, were from the saw. Um, so practically inside here, this was very good and uniform. Um, I'm going to calculate the density of this block here in just a little bit. Um, this block right here, I'm just going to ahead and burn real fast. Um, and so, yeah, that's practically what what's going to happen. Um, so I like I I, li I actually think the grain's very good. It's um, very hard. You could drop this and not break it, you know, a hundred times from the Empire State Building. Um, so this kind of propellant is an epoxy-based ammonium perchlorate propellant. Um, most um, uh, composite propellants are made from rubbery binders, which the most common are HTPB and PBAN. And PBAN is cured with regular epoxy resin. And uh, PBAN needs to be heated at about 140 degrees for three days to cure. And that's kind of a setback. You have to build a curing box. But with the epoxy, you just let it set. And uh, I'm not sure. I've not been able to read about epoxy-based propellants because the literature is uh, interestingly absent. But um, I'm not sure if epoxy-based propellants ha uh, deliver less specific impulse than the rubbery binders would. Um, but through some experimentation, I hope to find the answer to that, that exact question. Okay. Right, this is the larger portion of the propellant, which I expect to burn a lot faster. Ooh, there was some sparking. Did you see that? You might want to go inside. Turn it off. <laughs> it's got ammonia in it.